Oh, hey, everybody. It's Paul. Uh, it's good to be with you. Um, I've been on hiatus for a little a little time, and I will recount this. It's a story not, not to be missed, for sure. And uh, it will make your watching my channel uh, be all worthwhile. I won't get into it now. I'll probably do it tomorrow. I'll probably tell you tomorrow. Uh, the sun is still uh, glaring in my eyes at 7.30 at night. It's 7.40. And that big fireball is still uncomfortably hot. But it's settling down now. So it doesn't hurt so much. Um, I'll let you know what went on today. I, I have to... I have to take the bull by the horns now, and I have to get the snap shit. I wound up, uh, I don't know what it was, but this last uh, certainly two weeks, certainly 10 days, but more like two weeks, I have been walking, and I've been walking an accelerated pace and a lot more of it. I mean, a lot. Unfortunately, um, I've treated myself to sandwich after this, after that. And unfortunately now, um, I haven't been able to seem to, to crack it. I haven't been able to seem to crack it. And, uh, the common denominator is that, um, I always had here when I'm working, I have this raisin bread and I've got the butter and I've got, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, strawberry turnovers or whatever it is. And it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen like that. And I have to get serious with myself and I'm just going to have to shut down. And it's serious because in what I thought I was doing in taking off a couple of pounds, uh, I think probably more likely I stayed the same or gained a pound or two. So it would not surprise me if my weight right now is 222 pounds, 223 pounds. And I don't think it's any higher than that. My gut feeling tells me it's around 220. And um, I guess I've waited long enough. I'll walk into the store uh, with you now and I will go ahead and, and I will take my weight and uh, I told you, if you wanted to lose weight with me, uh, come on and let's do it. Well, I don't plan on being a failure. I've done this before. I did this back, uh, 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 17, 16, 15, uh, uh, let's see, about, about 14 years ago, maybe not even, maybe about 12 years ago. It was, it was, it was 14 years ago. I took my weight from 207 down to 164. I mean, it was no joke. It took me like four and a half months, maybe five months. It was a long time, but I did it and I did it through walking. I never did anything else. I never joined a health club. I never did anything. So it was just walking. It is the body's natural function, the locomotion, the natural thing. So I bought myself a new pair of sneakers for only $11.50. I couldn't believe it, frankly. And uh, I've been wearing them now for about three or four days. And they, they're they holding up. It was a good buy. So what I did was I bought myself a, another pair of boots, which I needed. Uh, because it's best to tuck your pants into your boots. It, it, you know, this way, you know, if they're long, they don't, you know, drag on the floor. If they're a little short, they, you don't look like you're in, you know, fighting, fighting the flood or something. So, um, I did that and, um, I sent off a, a, a big box to my wife and, uh, it, um, it was a lot of candy for my son, a lot of chocolate bars, uh, a lot of those. Uh, things I told you about today. I went to Walmart today and I tried to buy uh, beefaroni. <clears throat> and beefaroni is like like little, it's kind of like elbow macaroni that isn't curved. It's just, it's just flat, but it's like a tube. Little ones like that. And it's mixed with little bits of beef in, in tomato sauce. Now, I tried it. My son was on the line with me, you know, and... Um, I have to be honest with you, I did not like the sauce. 
and it's a bit mushy, but I could deal with that. But the sauce was really a letdown. It was thick too. I noticed it, but the sauce is not good. So uh, I sent 28 cans of that to my son and I told my wife to make sure that you put tomatoes in there, cut up tomatoes in there and, um, you know, put a little, maybe some uh, crushed red pepper in there or some Taco Bell sauces, which I kind of snatched, so to speak. And, um, uh, I, you know, maybe a little bit of onion in there or something, but definitely tomatoes and um, maybe a little olive oil mixed in with it, whatever. And it will make those um, about a seven out of 10. You know what I mean? Because right now um, I was not impressed. I ate a whole can and I was not impressed. Uh, they're loaded with a billion milligrams of sodium. So they're not good for you. Uh, but you know, when you're young, you can handle it. So I decided to get it. And uh, my idea was to buy four more cases today uh, because they're 67 cents each. And the, the Chef Boyardee beefaroni is $1.27. So I know that these are a good deal. I was going to get them for myself and just eat them as I need them, you know, but I, I began to realize it wasn't the thing to do. So I bought them and I actually took them back. I didn't buy cases of it. They only had 11 pieces, uh, 11 cans and they were sold out. Now what I really went for was the chocolate powder, uh, you know, for chocolate milk and that was gone. That was gone. I couldn't believe it. They had plenty of cans uh, two days ago when I went there. And uh, I went, I, I wanted to get it because it was $2.99. And it made, it's like Swiss Miss or whatever that stuff is, Nes, Nes, uh, Nesquik or whatever, right? Hershey's chocolate. But it's not liquid, it's powder. So it's easier to ship. And what happened was uh, the cans were completely sold out and they went up a dollar. They were two ninety eight, and I bought five of them last week because I knew they were a good deal. And I said, shit, I better get over there and buy another four or five and ship them in the next box because my son loves chocolate um, and it's lightweight. So um, uh, they didn't have a single one, even with the dollar raise in price. I probably would have bought one or two because they were still a good deal. But now I'm just not going to do it. So um, I, I went, um, I, I ate one of those cans, like I told you, not impressive in the least, very ho-hum. And um, I wound up taking it back, like I told you, to Walmart. And uh, in lieu of that, you'll be proud of me, most of you here, certainly my wife will. Um, I wound up buying, uh, buying a belt. I got like, only got like $15 back. And I got this belt here and it was just hard to believe because this beautiful belt, which will go, you know, good with anything with black was merely $7, which I find to be astonishing because you can't buy a belt now for less than like 12 bucks or 14 bucks. And even at dollar general or whatever, I mean, it's still like 10 or $12. So Walmart had it for seven. Uh, evidently, there's a, a thing right now, maybe uh, going back to school or whatever, and they're not charging sales tax. I noticed it because I only paid $7 for that. So instead of having a whole bunch of beefaroni, which I'm not going to be able to eat anyway, it's too salty, um, you know, both for my taste and, and both for health matters, um, you know, I'm not going to do it. So I just left it there. And then I've got plenty of uh, canned food to send to my wife. And we're going to, I'm going to have about four of these uh, postal boxes full of all sorts of stuff that I'm going to send them along with a solar cooker. And uh, that's probably going to be the last box that I'm going to send. And um, my wife is set up now with what I estimate to be three years of food. Um, certainly in a pinch, it'll be three years of food. I think under normal conditions, it's between one and a half and uh, maybe two years, although maybe not quite two years. But uh, what I did was most of my pay went to uh, shipping a lot of boxes over there. And um, also 
you know, I set her up over there, uh, you know, because my son is there too, you know. And um, what I did was um, she now has 25-gallon water jugs, which are very good, and they're a very good price over there. Uh, they're only 250 pesos, which is shocking. Maybe they went up to 300. Now, there's still a good deal because over here, you can't buy a water jug for less than 20 or $25, especially a five-gallon. So, And then they even have a little spigot at the bottom to let the water out. So I got her 20 pieces of that. That's 100 gallons of water. And, um, you know, you never know when you might have a contaminated supply of water with a hurricane or whatever else it's happened before in the philippines there so they had an earthquake i was talking to my family a couple of days ago and uh, it was an earthquake i couldn't see it move but they could feel it moving so um i don't know it was a big one it was like a 6.9 or something 7.1 or something it's a big earthquake i got stuck in a i got caught in an earthquake in 1999 and it was no fun I was with a girl in the Philippines and it was nighttime and um, I woke up because I felt something moving in the hotel. I felt the floor move. Everything was moving and then the lamp fell off and everything went dark and outside you just heard a lot of screaming, women screaming and stuff. And um, it was awful. I felt lucky to be alive because that was a 6.8 and it was right there in Manila. So I was very lucky, but it was, they're no fun. And then you don't want to go indoors anymore. You want to stay out. So, um, you know, it's a good idea. You never know what will happen. And that's why I tried to build their food supply. So um, the other thing I got that was I was really happy that I did because it's kind of going up now again is uh, we bought the canned meat and uh, the canned chicken. And that is the fucking canned chicken has exploded in price. And the availability has gone down. So they're doing something with the production facilities or something. They're doing something with it, obviously. Um, so um, that's that. And um, uh, she still got four more boxes coming in. So could very well be. Um, and I sent them a lot of Mexican food. You know, those tortilla shells, not the shells, but the, the pancake things, they're round and you put Mexican food in there. I sent her a lot of refried beans. Um, uh, you know, she can mix the chicken with it to make a nice, you know, chicken refried bean burrito. Uh, lots of hot sauce. I must have swiped tons of Taco Bell sauce, like 500 of them. And um, I'll get more. I'll get more the next time that I ship it. I'll have more. Um, and um, boy, those are so handy. They come in so handy for cooking and everything. But they're really good on burritos. Uh, Taco Bell sauce is delicious. Uh, the hot one. Uh, not fire and not that. That one tastes Pakistani or something, you know. It's got like paprika in it or something. I don't like it. And then the mild ones just don't taste like anything. So anyways, I sent them a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of Pez candy. You know those Pez candy dispensers? Sent them a ton of those. Um, I didn't send her coffee, but she's got like... 10 of those big cans of Maxwell House. So she's got like 10 big giant cans of, you know, uh, fresh coffee, you know, canned coffee. Um, not instant, but, you know, um, brewed coffee. So they're set now for a while. And as you know, coffee, especially canned coffee, is highly barterable. So if you get into trouble and you need to, you know, trade, you know, coffee for some cough medicine or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Or coffee for, um, you know, I don't know, a chicken or whatever, you know what I mean? You can always trade with it. So uh, my illuminations now of this is I've now come to the fact that I fucked up for 10 days. I've walked and I can feel the difference in my in my thighs, I can feel the difference. And in my upper part of my legs, like my thighs here, um, I can feel the difference. In the front part of my legs, I can feel the difference. I can walk now without tiring. I can go two and a half miles. And unless I'm off, uh, you know, uh, unless I'm off, it's an off day or something, I can, I can walk more easily. 
I could go four miles, depending. I have to keep away from the sun. I can't do that during the day. But uh, morning and night, like I'm going to have to go out now. The sun is now down. So it's, um, you know, it's not bad. And I'm going to have to do it. And I'm going to have to do a, you know, three and a half, four mile walk. I'm going to have to do it. I ate, I ate a lot today. And um, I had, um, I had uh, something, what did I have? Raisin bread, which I was going to finish off today here uh, with that butter. And then these uh, cherry turnovers or whatever they are, cheese, guava things. And um, it's all going out, folks. Uh, whatever I can't bring back, the popcorn here that I bought, um, all going back or gets thrown out tonight. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's the way it is. And I hate doing it because I, the one thing I did this week was that my, my cost to eat was not very much. I didn't really buy a lot of food and I'm starting to buy ice and I've got two little mini coolers, those styrofoam coolers, and they work pretty good. So a $2 bag of ice will last me about three quarters of a day. It doesn't last the whole day, but I've been noticing that I get a lot of these cups. I always have 10 or 12 of these laying around in the cup and, the, and I cleaned up my car for the most part. I got to finish tomorrow and, um, I have no more of these cups. Why? I'm not buying sodas anymore. I'm not doing it. I buy uh, one of these from the public stores. And when you fill a cup with ice like this, it fills it four times. So it's kind of like getting four of those drinks. And I know they're only like 79 cents at 7-Eleven right now. But it's... Um, and some of them are like a dollar twenty nine and stuff like that. I can't always get to Seven Eleven, so I think I'm doing the right thing there. But everything is going out now. I have to get rid of all the stuff, and um, my car will be cleaned up, and it's going to be nice and clean, uh, like really tight. And I'm going to treat it for bugs again. And um, it was really bad in here. I don't mind telling you, it was so bad that it. It, like I've seen bad conditions. I remember one time I had a girlfriend who was a pothead, among other things. And um, that was back in the late 80s. And boy, oh boy. In fact, it was in the mid 80s to late 80s. And uh, all the, she had a little apartment and had shag carpeting. And the people that lived there before must, must have been slobs or something. They told me it was a fat woman. And um, she ate all over the place. And there were cockroaches, not big ones, but small ones. And I think they call them German cockroaches. And I mean, they it was insane. It was insane. It was the worst roach infestation that I had ever seen in my life. That was the worst. When you would go out, uh, get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom or go to the kitchen sink, there were thousands of them in there. And this was the same way. The car was so bad uh, from eating in here and spending so much time in here that it was equally as bad. It was horrendous. So uh, what I did was I bought boric acid. That's the ticket. And that's what I learned back then when I was with that girl because I treated it. And what I did was I took uh, spoiled meat and I put it down like on a, you know, like on the kitchen floor so you can clean it up. And then I took Rice Krispies and I crunched up the Rice Krispies kind of over it. And, you know, there was like some beef juice coming out. And, you know, I put a little bit of strawberry preserves, like jelly on top of that. And um, uh, we went to Ocala that weekend. So what I did was I just left it. And um, I put that on the floor and we left early in the morning and I took boric acid and I sprinkled it over all of the food and all around the food. And when I came back, we came back uh, like a day and a half, two days later, we came two back two days later, we left on early Saturday morning. We came back Saturday, uh, Sunday night. There were so many dead roaches all over the place. And I swear to you, there was not one single roach after I did that, I never saw a single roach. 
And what happened in here? I haven't seen one single roach, not even a stray, in probably like, I don't know, like 10 days, like 10 days, maybe two weeks. I don't know about two weeks, but 10 days, more than a week. I haven't seen one single thing. And they were all over. So, I mean, they were inside the CD player. They were inside the switch for the AC. They were inside this goddamn thing over here. They were crawling everywhere. It was un... It, it, I, it, was, it may have been worse than that situation over there. But I knew what to do, and that's exactly what I did in here. I went out to work an eight-hour shift, and I didn't stay in my car. I closed this car up. I put that boric acid down and sprinkled it over some jelly and this and that, whatever it was that I had on there, some chicken and so forth and so on. And when I came back after an eight-hour shift, um, I didn't see a whole lot of dead roaches. But what happens is they take the boric acid. They, they eat and they fill up with the boric acid and it blows them up and they carry some of that boric acid on their bodies and it, it, it they can't uh, flatulate or they can't burp and that's what kills them. The boric acid makes them explode. So it doesn't take too much. A little bit will make them sick enough to where they can't move. And um, boy, did that do the trick. And you don't know how much I wanted to just bomb the car with these raid uh, bombs, but I didn't do that. I did that first. And then I had to drive back home that night at midnight. So uh, when I, uh, the next morning, I, I went out of the car to walk and all, all this. And I put the, the four, no, I put 10 bug bombs in here. 10. Can you imagine this? In fact, it may have been 12. And I mean, I took those bug bombs and I put them into here, into here, into the CD player, into the air conditioning, into those switches right there. I sprayed it everywhere, down here, right there where there's a little gap on the, the roof, everything. And I left that for like five or six hours. I left it for a long time. And since then, I have not seen a single roach, period. So if you ever have a really bad problem, that's what you do. And I'm telling you right now, it's dark now, and you can look. And they were going all over the place there before, and I don't see one. And by the way, I do have food in here like that, you know. I have food in here. Uh, so, you know, they should be smelling it and coming in. So that's what you do if you ever don't. Now, the last thing I will tell you is um, my son is really doing a spectacular job. He's learning a game um, based on World War II called Axis and Allies. And it is anything but an easy game. It's very complicated, very difficult. They say 12 to adult, but I don't think it's age 12 to adult. I think it's more like age 15 or 16. And he's overwhelmed, but he's learning and he's learning fast. And um, the reason I know he's learning fast, and I'll close after this, is um, he's playing the allies. So he's, so he's Russia, the United States and the United Kingdom. And, um, I'm helping him of course. And he wants to buy things because, you know, like you get an income on each one of those countries, depending on how much land you control. Uh, like yeah, you have your own land and then you have what you take from up uh, from the axis. If, if there is anything you take and then it has to be deducted if they take land from you. So it's a little complicated, but anyways, um, Russia winds up losing a little bit of her property because of the German advance. The Germans just took Karelia. <laughs> they had already marched through Ukraine <laughs> and they were already up into Moscow. And several thousand troops got up into Moscow, very close to Moscow, which is capital. And um, the rumors had it that they could see the uh, the the um, red square, but uh, they they discounted this uh, with binoculars. They said they could see it, but it's been discounted because, according to uh, what I heard, the Russians camouflaged it, and you would not have been able to see it anyway. It was totally camouflaged, and. Um, covered is what I understand. And that makes sense. But um, uh, my son came out and he's playing Russia and he sees that it's not going well. 
uh, for Russia in the beginning uh, in the beginning parts of that game. And he said, why, why, why is this so poor? You know, my, I can't really get my, you know, defenses up and I can't attack real well. And I said, son, that's exactly how it was in World War II. I said, that's exactly how it was. They, Russia got, Germany shoved up their ass. I mean, it was so bad that you had Russian commanders that were committing suicide. And that's no joke because they wiped out thousands of aircraft thousands in the first couple of days, thousands of aircraft. I, I don't know how Russia pulled it together. I know how they did it. They took their production facilities and moved it to Eastern, to Siberia, where it's 40 below zero, if not more. And those people worked in those factories and many of them only had tarps. For God's sakes, they didn't even have a, a built structures, only to the side, only the sides. It was unbelievable. And they created tanks. They made uh, those, um, I forget, the, the, those uh, wonderful trucks that, that shot all those uh, missiles, those rockets. I can't remember the name of those. It's a woman's name. I can't remember it now. Uh, the Katusha rockets. I mean, they, they weren't accurate. 14 of those shot off of a truck rockets in 1942. And seeing that coming at you, if you were a German soldier, would have terrified me. I mean, and they made such an evil sound. 14 of these. And there wasn't just 14. They'd have lines of these things. Truck after truck after truck with these missiles. Uh, that's how they did it. The Russian people are tough people, which is why I would never go and date a Russian woman. Because I think they wouldn't even think twice to kill you in a second. So, but that's uh, just my opinion. They're tough people. Anyways, uh, that's my little talk with you. And um, my son is calling and we are going to play another round of Axis and Allies. And I can't even play a whole round, which is five turns, because it takes so long to teach him that we're doing like in an hour and a half